Blackwell. I'm going to read from uh, Ephesians uh, 4, verse 4. It says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in all. I just uh, kind of had a conversation last night with some people, and uh, it's just like a lot of people come against, you know, apostolic faith, and uh, it's like, if you believe in the entirety of the Bible, you know, what, what, what we really believe is right there. So it's just like, you know, we really got to stand strong in our faith and uh, really use this as our rock and uh, good things will happen. Sorry about that. So if you guys will join me in focused prayer. Dear Jesus, we're thankful for you and the opportunity to be gathered here in your name, Lord. You wash the blood of Jesus over everybody here today. We're thankful to be gathered in your presence. And we pray an anointing over the worship team and the word here today, Lord, that the word sits in our hearts. We're thankful for everything that you do for us, for your grace and your mercy. We pray that the Holy Ghost fire falls down from heaven today, Lord, and miracles and healings are happen here today, Lord. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray.
Aren't you thankful to be in the house of God? I tell you, a God who can move on any situation, any need, any trial, any tribulation. And today, if you want that need met, it does not have to be physical illness. Anything you have going on in your life can be taken care of today. In this moment right now, he's the God of right now. We are the church of today. Revival is now. If you need prayer today, remember those on our prayer list. Remember all of our prayers. If you have a need of uplifted hand, give it to him today. But if you need prayer today, if you want to come up, Pastor and the ministers, we will gather around and pray with you today. And you can walk out of here different than what you came in. You can walk out of here with that burden left at the altar. You can walk out with that sickness left at the altar. Just glorify him today. Pray with us. God bless me. You brought me over. 
got anything to praise the Lord for today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you're on that mountain and you're ready to praise him for on the mountain. But maybe you're down at the facing the mountain. Go ahead and praise him because your God's not going to leave you at the, at the base of it. He's going to take you through. Hallelujah. He's going to take you through. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I would like for us to, to go to prayer for two before we do choir right now. Because our sister Amar is facing a mountain. She yesterday at, at service or Friday night at service, uh, a young fellow was worshiping and he fell over and landed on her and it broke her good leg in three places. And uh, it was uh, it was just heartbreaking. You know, she, she struggles with uh, mobility anyway, and uh, now she's in a full leg cast. And we want to pray for Amara. Yes. She's in excellent spirit. Amen. She is strong and stronger than you would even think she could be. Yeah. It's just amazing what resilience she has, but we want to pray for her to, that the Lord will hold her up. Yes. And Steve and Stephanie as well. You know, they're probably wondering... Why this mountain? Hallelujah. But I know God is going to bring a miracle, a blessing, or a victory through it. Amen? Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I want to pray for Sister Amara. And I want to pray for little Gabe. He is home today as well, sick. And Michael's with him. We miss both of them. We want to pray. And James is not here, I don't believe. We want to pray for, for his healing, little Gabe's healing in Jesus' name. Father, we plead the blood and we call upon your name seeking you, oh God, for a move of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that deliverance and healing and power and strength, Lord, would be upon Sister Amara, Lord, and her family. Lord, that you would move in a mighty way, that you would bring healing to her leg. Lord, that you would fuse those bones together as they should. In the name of Jesus, they'd be stronger than they were before. Lord, that she would be able to Walk, Lord, freely and walking in authority of blessing, O oh God, as a child of the King. We plead the blood over her, Lord, and she looks at this mountain and says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Help her today, comfort her today, and be a strength to her. We plead the blood over this tiny baby, Lord, again. Lord, that you will bless Gabriel, Lord, with healing. Lord, he is named after a messenger, a mighty messenger of God. And we want him to have breath. We want him to have voice today. We want him to have strength today. We plead the blood, God, that you'll bring healing to his body and deliverance that you will be with James. And Michael today is there at home and be with the whole family and bring healing and health and strength. We claim the promises of God. Our God is more than able in Jesus' name.
God's just good. Don't you love to praise Him? There's nothing more that I love to do than to praise Him. I've always been a praiser. I always love to praise. Nothing better than standing with your hands up and just saying, I love you, Jesus. I love you. I thank you. He has been too good to me. I don't want the rocks to cry out, that's for sure. Well, it's time today to celebrate some of our volunteers. A couple of weeks ago, we celebrated our fantastic duo, cleaning duo. Um, the Sunday before that, we celebrated our amazing music and audio visual departments. And today, we will celebrate First Impressions team, which we call FIT. This team can either make us feel like a million bucks as we come in the church building or make us feel like we are an inconvenience as we come in. So, wow, what an important ministry. This ministry affects every one of us that come through the door. I'm always here before they are, so I don't get to experience it. But as our fit volunteers focus on those coming in, they are priming us all for a great service. If they're downhearted and they're, uh, you know, we can come. It affects you when you come in the door. But when the first impressions team, which is fit, first I, F, I, T, first impression team. Um, when we come in the door, and if they are encouraging, if they're smiling, if they're happy, and they're welcoming you, and they're excited that you're coming in, it affects, affects the service because they come in with smiles, encouragement, kindness, and that anointing of the Holy Ghost. Do you know that studies show that most of the time people decide if they will return to a church by how welcomed they feel before the singing or even the preaching? So our first impression team is one of the most important ministries of the church. As they approach a guest with a smile, they offer help and give suggestions. It can turn an overwhelming experience of entering an unfamiliar place into an easy experience. Our guests are given a brochure that explains the different ways we worship. It has scripture to show them the ways why we worship the way we do. They also receive other Blackwell information. This is one of the many ways fit ministers. So Melissa is our fit director, so she can come on up here. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Melissa has been married for 36 years, just this past Valentine's Day. She has an adult daughter, Sierra, which just was baptized last week. Woohoo! Um, and she has two son, adult sons, Caleb and Corey. She's a grandmother to four little ones and a grandmother to Lance Carter. What? And another one on the way. She's also a registered nurse. Her volunteers right now, um, she has different ones here and there, but Brandy, which is still on a cruise, I believe. John, Tish, Keisha was today, I think, on today. Um, if, if, if you've been on the FIT team, if you can come up, if you're on the FIT team here and there, let's give them a hand. These are our volunteers. And I know recently Amara, Carter, Aaliyah, Eva have been added. Different ones have been added. They take turns. And so if you come late, you probably miss this team, but you meet Melissa. <laughs> FIT eagerly awaits you every service. That's right. That's their ministry. Do you know they literally stand back there and wait for you to come in? That's what they do. They wait for you to come in to make you feel good and welcomed. Their job is to be the most friendly and caring of anyone you have ever come in contact. Some other duties, I'm just going to read a few of their duties. The volunteers, they're scheduled weekly. We have an app um, that the whole music and everything's on. They are scheduled weekly. A welcome team is scheduled every every service and a farewell person in each service. Our farewell, farewell is at the end telling you bye. They arrive at their stations around a half an hour before service. Um, they don't have service prayer in here with us usually, so they do it back there at their stations in between people coming in um, and before you get here. They are praying back there to feel that, that foyer with the Spirit. They work at being the friendliest people you've seen all day. If they're not, you tell them, hey, you're not looking too friendly. They may need a little help here and there. we got some new ones. So. <laughs> some hold signs with positive statements. Anybody see them holding signs today as you came in? 
They are to make guests and members feel comfortable, welcomed, and at home. They ask new guests to fill out guest cards so we have the ability to send guest information or give them any help they need. We also send texts, a call, a postcard to guests with information that FIT gives us. They give us that information. So did you all know that? I'm sure you do. You give us information. Um, they help or assist the elderly or disabled. Someone comes that in a wheelchair or a cane or something that needs help, they assist them. They give encouragement to those as they come in to lift their spirits. They hand out a gift bag to the new guest. They give direction. They show guests the coat rack, bathrooms, and lead them to sanctuary and help find a seat if necessary. They also help connect a new child or youth with his or her teacher before service. If it's a new child and they do not know where they go when they come in, they show them those things or a new parent. They also close the sanctuary doors after service begins. They keep the foyer straightened while waiting. They help get names for any giveaways we have. They help with parking when needed and many, many other tasks. Miss Melissa can always use more volunteers, so if you're interested, please let her know. So, Melissa and all of you, we want to say thank you for all the encouragement, smiles, help, and direction you give every service. We thank you for being our First Impressions team of Blackwell Church. Keep smiling and loving people. Let's stand and give them an applause. Woo! Give them a few screams. Woo! All right, you may be seated. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you've ever been somewhere and you go in and you don't know where to go, you don't know who anybody is, you understand how important it is to have somebody there to smile and greet you and help you figure out where to go. So I'm thankful for the ministry of the First Impressions team and how they impact our church from the start to finish of the service they are involved. So thank you for all that you do. Um, you know, I've kind of, I kind of went back and forth and I asked Diana and I asked Andrew, what should I say about WYC? Because, you know, we take the kids to events and we come back and we always want to talk about how excited we are and all the awesome things that happen. And it's not that God didn't move because he did, but I can't help but feel a little bit frustrated that Amara was hurt, you know, and why did this happen? But I feel like the Lord is going to do something through what happened to her because it makes no sense that it happened. And I there would be no purpose if it wasn't for the glory of God. So I'm believing that God's going to do something through this. And it's going to be a miracle. And I'm excited. I'm excited. Also, I'm losing my voice, so I apologize. Um, wanted to recap Wednesday night service. We had a fantastic service on Wednesday. Andrew brought a word about the art of waiting. You know, we live in a world where we want everything right now. And sometimes we have to wait on the Lord, right? And we have to wait for him to work in our situation. And that can take trust and faith and patience. Um, our young people were super involved in that service. If you were involved in that service on Wednesday night and you're a young person, can you stand up? Come on, guys. You can stand up. <laughs> So we had Caleb Luna on the bass. We had Lance um, Carter on percussion in the in the drum booth with Andrew. We had Eva on the guitar, um, and then Aaliyah and Mara, Amara on vocals. And it was really exciting to me to see that next generation stepping into those ministries and those roles and seeing how they're going to grow into those things as they continue to grow. And so I encourage you, be here on Wednesdays. Be a part of what we're doing. It's exciting. Um, and you're going to see good things in your life if you make it a priority. That's for sure. This coming Wednesday, we have a business meeting, 6.30 p.m. prior to service. Um, and then we start our March Sunday night revivals the first Sunday in March. So 6 p.m., uh, bring somebody with you. Be inviting people. Grab some invite cards. Let people know. Um, we're going to get this out on Facebook and social media this week. So please look for that post and share it. You can send it to your friends and family. You can invite them. Um, multiple ways. There's endless ways to invite people to church these days. So make that a priority. But also plan to be here on Sunday mornings for um, Sunday school at 11 and then back at 6 o'clock for revival. Um, we will have a missions commitment service during the month of March as well. We did this a couple years ago, and then um, last year we focused on some other things, and then this year we would like to do a missions commitment service again. 
So the idea behind a mission commitment service is it is a service where we specifically pray and fast and talk about what we want to do for missions for the year. So what can I personally do? What can my family do? How can I commit to a missionary? You can either choose a specific missionary, and um, I'm, I'm assuming that Cody or somebody will have some more details about what that will look like. In the past, we've had cards where you could choose a specific missionary that you then give to that mission field on a monthly basis or weekly basis, whatever your budget allows. Or, um, of course, Blackwell as a whole, we give to missions every single month. Um, so if you want to give to missions through the missions fund, you can do that. So just be in prayer. What, Lord, you know, I may not go. I have no calling. I have no desire to go on a missions field. But I know that I still can be involved in missions through giving and prayer and fasting and being a part of those things. So join us in that. Our Sunday Fun Day committee has put together a, kind of a fun little thing for missions commitment service. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a missions food court type thing after service. So it'll be it'll be short and because we'll be coming back at six o'clock for revival that night. But they're working on something fun. So make sure to be in prayer about that. Um, Taco Tuesday, ladies Bible study is March 7th at 6.30 at Nika's house. If you have questions about that, you can ask Sister Diana or I'm sure Nika can answer questions as well. Um, and then just a reminder, we do have our annual 2023 calendars available in the back um, on the guest services booth. If you have any any questions or want to get that to plan around your year, your year, it's a good opportunity to do so. Pastor, if you would come. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Amen. We give to the Lord joyfully, don't we? Praise the Lord. These two young men are coming. I've already asked. Uh, yes. Yes, I asked you, Caleb, please. Um, thank you, Lord. These two gentlemen are going to come. Uh, Brother John, stand and pray over the offering for us today. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. These gentlemen are going to come to you today. Give joyfully to the Lord today. I would like to tell you that we, we last Sunday gave $400 in our Soup Bowl Sunday offering. And uh, that's going to make a big difference at the Wheeler Mission. So we're excited to be able to give that, feed some people, and uh, help some men get back on their feet. God bless you as you give. Miss classes today. I just like to ask: Does anybody remember the meal last week? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, anybody want to give a shout out for something they thought was good? Chili. All right. What was that other? Chip and salsa. Brownies. A little pecan pies, pulled pork, deer chili, taco soup. There was also a pulled pork chili, buffalo chicken dip. 
broccoli cheese soup, chocolate covered strawberries. See, you should have been here. Pigs in a blanket. A little self promotion there. They were good though. They were good. I'm thankful all of you are here today. And let's give it up for these kids that are out in force today. Isn't it awesome to see them all out here today? <laughs> Sister Keisha took a bunch of uh, kids up for, um, for the kids' jam portion of the uh, winter youth convention. And uh, she had the bus, and you give her a bus, she fills it up. So. That's why there's many kids, and then there are others even here that, that are just extras. We're, we're thankful for all of them. It's awesome. Thank you for coming today. Every one of you young men and women are special, and we're thankful for each one of you. Praise God. So God bless you as you are dismissed to Sunday school. say it every year, but it's true every year. I'm so thankful for how much effort uh, that Blackwell Church puts into stuff like uh, winter youth convention camps. This year was no surprise. Um, Brother Cody was part of a team that did the lights and the sound, and it was professional. It was awesome, and they went up there and, and had two or three meetings prior and when they got there unfortunately they had to reconfigurate the whole place so that they could get it the way they had planned in the meetings so somebody dropped the ball on the other end but I'm thankful that they didn't just throw up their hands but they got busy and, and got it done and we had a great conference um, and was you could hear it you could see it it was awesome Thank you, Brother Cody, and those that were with you, Brother uh, Austin and Brother Luke, both uh, putting in effort there. Thank God. Can we give them a hand today? <laughs> Bible says give honor where honor's due, and I, I just want to take a couple of minutes with, uh, with Andrew and Tara and Sister Keisha taking kids up there. It is, a, it is such a privilege to go to things like that, but it makes it so much easier when there's somebody willing to take them. And so Brother Andrew and Sister Tara and, and Sister Keisha all are gone, but they still uh, deserve to be mentioned, and I appreciate their effort. Uh, and I thank the Lord for parents that were able to go and... Uh, support their kids and and their desires to be there and that was awesome and appreciate that young marrieds that went um there were people in the altars our people in the altars praying brother andrew um was singing um and uh our grace was singing and thankful for that and then you look around and you see a blackwell connection with so many people including brother bry who leads the state of Indiana, who used to be here and is now pastoring in, in a neighboring city. And we're grateful for your, your support as Blackwell Pentecostal Church, supporting the hard work and efforts of ministry throughout our state. And we're blessed to be a part of that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start with verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wear it with Ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praise the Lord. I'd like to preach to you today. Strong standing disciplined warriors strong standing disciplined war- warriors hallelujah can we pray father we praise you we know lord that you do great and mighty works lord we we know god you're in the midst we trust you and believe we pray that you will guide us O oh lord as the word comes forth let it be anointed anoint the ears to hear let our hearts receive Lord, and bless my voice today, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise today. Thank you, Lord. And you may be seated. I'm having trouble here. My, my, my voice is weak. I know you'll help me, Brooke. Praise the Lord. You just finished my sentences for me. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Amen. We had a young man that left our church about coming on two years ago. He left to go to the military. His name is Corey Prow. Prowse. And uh, Corey, uh, if there ever was a young man that seemed to be just made for the military, it was Corey. Because he, I've never seen a kid stand straighter in my life. He just stood up just, just straight as an arrow all the time. Yes, sir. But he wasn't in the military yet. And I thought, I thought if he, it, it, one thing, there's not going to be a surgery cutter in his face. Telling him to stand up straight. Unless he gets in his face and tells him, I didn't tell you to stand up straight yet. Why are you standing up straight? I don't understand the military sometimes. But, um, but Corey had a desire to do that. And, and you see, I follow him on, on Facebook and I see some pictures. And he, he's all painted up and he's got the gray and black on his face. And he's there with he rarely ever has a picture by himself he usually has a picture with with the men that he serves as a team with and uh you can see that he loves it he loves being in it and it and as hard as it is to see somebody go away from us and uh go to washington state and he, I think he went to, I'm not sure, he went somewhere else, and then he went to Kentucky. Then he went to Washington State, and he's serving out there right now. And before long, he's probably going to be deployed, uh, because that's just the, the nature of it. Usually you do a, a, a deployment at some point in that first four years. And he's going to face obstacles that he has, he has trained for. But it's not just the training of of how to shoot a gun, a lot of times it's how to hear. It's how to be disciplined, how to, to control your emotion. And so often 
this is why the scripture brings this to our attention. That we are to be warriors and not just nilly warriors or silly warriors or quitter warriors, but we're to be strong, disciplined warriors. People who have a desire to fight for God and nothing else is going to stop us. Andrew made a statement on, on Wednesday, and I promise you, if you did not watch that on Facebook or on YouTube, it is worth the time, and you should, for this very statement that he made. And he made a statement, I won't say it exactly word for word, but I can tell you, he said one thing. He said, you cannot continue or allow yourself to let conviction be made out in your mind as church hurt. And I about fell out of the pew. I would never heard it said. What an amazing statement. Because so many people today can't take the hard word preached. And when the word of God is preached, it cuts like a sword. The word of God sometimes does a precision surgery on our heart, right? Sometimes it really works on us. The Bible describes it as a two-edged sword, dividing asunder even to the bone and the marrow. So it is, a, it is a force to reckon with, and sometimes we get that and we feel like, oh, pastor don't like me. Oh, the teacher is against me. Oh, this is that. Uh, that, that dear sister that I've always appreciated so much just told me I'm not what I should be. When the Bible clearly tells us that the ladies of Zion should teach the younger women. And so we, we take it as church hurt, church hurt, church hurt. When all it is good old-fashioned conviction. And we need to square up our shoulders, stand straight, and say, I can handle conviction. Because I know God cares for me. Somebody say, man. Now, you know, I'll be honest with you. It's, it's not easy to stand up here and preach to people. And not make a mistake. It's not easy to counsel with people. And not make a mistake. So that it, I, can't, I can't tell you that I won't ever make a mistake. But I can tell you that if I'm in this word. And I'm preaching here about the word. And I'm breaking down a, a scripture according to the word. i I would say 99% of the time I'm not planning to shoot at you. I may make eye contact with you. And a lot of times, I mean, if I'm just going to make eye contact with somebody, I may be making eye contact because I'm looking for a nod of the head or a smile. I'm looking for somebody to say, come on, pastor. It wouldn't even hurt if I heard an Amen. Then I wouldn't even have to look up. They believe it. They agree with it. I'll just keep on down. Woo! Hallelujah. Don't you love the Lord? I love church. I love church. Um, I, I got in church when I was 14 or going right on 14. And, you know, I never had to be made to go to church. I loved church from the very beginning. I've loved church all along. I have to admit it wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't easy all the time. You go to work and then you come home and you do a quick change and you go to church. Sometimes it's either grabbing something as you're going out the door or planning on coming home and eating late. And you're thinking, oh, I'm getting fatter and fatter because I'm eating after church. All that kind of stuff. But tell you, every time I walk through the door, I appreciate my visitation with the Lord. And it wipes away every excuse, every 
thing that I have. Now, the approach to the door, the Bible tells us, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Now, if you're finding yourself always walking through the door with a murmur, then you might be realizing that you're not activating the scripture in your life. So you might be fighting a hard time to get beyond that point. I'm just going to sit here and complain. I'm going to complain to God. I'm going to complain to everybody around me. I'm going to just, I'm just going to hurt for a little while. But the scripture tells us to enter his gates with thanksgiving. That's being thankful. Anybody thankful for anything? If you're not thankful for anything else, thank God for your shoes today. Because as you walk across that parking lot, it hurt. And without a doubt, you'd stub your toe somewhere on carpet. You'd get over one of them big old ugly toes, you know, that hurt. Thank God for your shoes. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Oh, he's blessed us so much. And into his courts with praise. That's praise, not complaints. Enter his courts with complaints. No, praise. God knows you got complaints. God knows you got problems. He knows everything, right? Do you think you're going to give his attention with all your complaints or with your praise? Do you think God knows you're broke? I can testify he does. I've been broke more than once. I've been broken more than once. I mean, he knows. He knows. It's amazing. The testimonies that I can come out with and you can come out with of the times you've been broke. Or you've been broken. Or you've been discouraged. And how many times going into the to church or conference, into prayer closet, into, into a fellowship meeting, into a, a, a prayer circle, into a, a handshake, have you gone with the right attitude and encouraged each other? It's beautiful what the Lord can do. We're two or three gathered together in his name. I'm not even started preaching. I got all kinds of scriptures today. Well, I have started preaching, but I haven't started preaching. Whew. We got time, right? I didn't hear very many amens on that one, but I'm preaching. I won't hurt anybody's feelings, but I know you'll stick around. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, the last there, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I want to talk about the military discipline of prayer. After the Scripture catalogs our spiritual armor, we put on the helmet of salvation, we got our sword of the Spirit, we got our feet covered with the uh, gospel, we are ready to go. There's a go in our feet. You see, that's why the gospel's in your feet because there, there's a go in your spirit when you got the when that's the part of your armor is your go. Anybody got a go? Anybody got to compel in your spirit today that I got to go out and find somebody to bring to church? I got to encourage somebody to to serve Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Prayer is a discipline. It's an exercise, the regimen, and the perpetual habit of a soldier. It's a necessity of a warrior that's fighting for God to be fighting with prayer. Without a prayer, a, a soldier... Or a warrior is weak, he's feeble, unable to manipulate the armor effectively. It is through prayer that we build up our strength. Jude 1.20 says, But ye, Brett, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, 
praying in the Holy Ghost. Effectual, fervent prayer is the means by which we activate the power to properly use the armor that we have been given. Hallelujah. Anybody believe it today? Anybody got the armor of God today? Praise the Lord. In the verse 13, it says, Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, and having done all to stand. I want to talk about the military discipline of preparation. Preparation. Or preparedness. The phrase to stand is a military term that once you have conquered the enemy, you stand ready. You're ready to take on the next one. You're prepared for the next conquest. Anybody ready? You've conquered sin in your life through the blood of Jesus Christ and full repentance of your heart. And you're walking with the Holy Ghost and expecting God to do a great work. You're standing strong. You're standing today. You've just gone through a battle where you've fought a spiritual battle at work or your family just went through something and now you're, you may be hobbled, you may be bloody a bit, you may even be dirtied by the situation, but you're standing still. Got your sword drawn. Got a, a preparedness about you. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Watch ye or be vigilant, awake, prepared. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quip you like men, be strong. Quip you like men, if you were to look that up somewhere else, probably ESV, would tell you, act like a man. Act manly. And it's speaking to the warrior who is a man in this particular case. You may apply that. You, well, you're not supposed to act like a man, right? You're going to act prepared, ready to do the work that you're called to do. So the writer used the Greek word that means prepared to fight the good fight of faith, always ready to defend the gospel, to stand against all attacks within and without. Are there any attacks? Do you get any attacks on your mind? Do you have any attacks uh, on, from the outside? Do you have people who are questioning everything you do, people who are trying to get you fired at work, people who are... are just convicted by you being there. You know, we've had some testimonies of people who said, hey, you know, I went to work, I just started a job, and all of a sudden they've quit cussing around me. You know, there is some respect that comes sometimes with, with, with serving God, and people see that. But there easily could as easily be someone who's, who's standing over here and says, I'm not going to quit cussing. Matter of fact, I'm going to cuss more. I'm not going to treat you with any kind of respect. Why? Because they don't treat anybody with respect. They don't have that discipline of respect. So they just, they just do whatever they want to do. And a lot of times, that's lie on you, cheat on you, and the whole works, right? Well, we're standing ready. We're fighting a good fight of faith. One lady who's come to the church, she, she said, hey, I got the, I got the uh, praying I got a trouble with a, a boss at work and said, I just decided to start praying. I started praying, God, give her a better job. She said, after a short period of time, praying, give her a better job. All of a sudden, she come in. She says, guess what? They said, what? She said, I'm leaving. And everybody in the room probably went, phew. But nobody did. But in their mind, they were, phew. And then the next words out of her mind was, I'm getting the dream job that I've always wanted. Oh, you could pray a curse on them. You could pray that, that they die a horrible death. You could, you could say, oh, God, I just want them to, to cower in fear and they can't leave their house. Now, would that even work? No, that doesn't even work. 
Depends on who you're praying to, I suppose. But we pray to the Almighty God. He has no desire for anyone's hurt. He's not going to answer your prayers and nonsense like that. You're praying amiss. But I can tell you, but when you're praying, God, bring a blessing on them. God, bring some peace in their life. God, they're tormented. They're troubled, and that's, that's coming out. God, I'm expecting something great to happen in their lives. And when you do that, instead, instead of being all being out of shape about your spouse and, 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 and being mean, why not begin to pray? Just speak it out. I'm praying for your joy. I'm praying for your joy. So what do you mean, joy? I'm praying that God just pours joy out on you. That it's like eating chocolate and, and chips all the time. You're, you're just full of joy. Every meal's pastor's chili. I didn't hear any mains on that either. <laughs> oh, isn't it good to see Billy? Everybody say hi, Billy. <laughs> Billy turned to her and said, I'm praying for your joy. Because <laughs> you all know Billy's got joy. Look at him. Oh, it's so good to have Billy. I tell you, I miss you when you're not here. Praise God. Isn't that great? Military discipline of endurance. Out of verse 18 again. Watch you whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The final instructions given to us in our commission Tell us, as warriors, we should preserve, persist, and endure. It is not enough to begin the fight. We must also finish it. Amen? That word endure, the Greek word to that is to remain, to have fortitude, to preserve, to hold on. Anybody holding on? Hallelujah. Sometimes it feels like you've got to take the end of the rope and tie a knot in it so you can't slip off. But I'm telling you, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. Hold on. Hallelujah. Hold on. As the word, as warriors of the word, we are called to endure many things. You're called to endure inflictions. In, in 2 Timothy 4, 5. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Well, I, I thought this was all roses and, and, and whipped cream. No. Sorry, you got the wrong idea. Warriors aren't all about that, are we? How about, how about this one? Endure hardness. Hardness being difficulties, situations that are not easy to bear. The scripture being, again, 2 Timothy 2, 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure persecution. Talking about because you are a warrior of the word, you're going to endure, right? So you're going to endure persecution in 312 of 2 Timothy. Yay! And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's no might in that. There's no might in that. You're going to suffer persecution. You're going to suffer some things. That's why Jesus told us that when it does happen, we should rejoice. Paul told us that we ought to rejoice in it, and that we've been counted worthy to suffer for Christ's sake. 
not easy. Turn to somebody and say, it's not easy. Endure chastening and correction. In Hebrews 12, 7, it says, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Let's look at the ESV version of that. It, It is for the discipline that you have to endure. Why? For discipline. For discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? We're going through it to get better. We're going through it to get stronger. And the more... There have been a lot of people tell me this, and I I believe it with all my heart. The more you praise God through your trouble, the more the devil's not going to give you the opportunity. So if, if if you're struggling and all you can get out is a complaint, then maybe you ought to change it to worship. And then the enemy goes, every time I pressure him... He worships. Well, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get him to quit. But when he begins to worship, God begins to bless. And God begins to bring victory in his life. It's time to worship. Start thank, thanking God. Rejoice, as, as Jesus said. Rejoice, as Paul said. Hallelujah. I almost said, woo, doggies. <laughs> I did say it, actually. Endure grief. 1 Peter 2, 19 and 20. If the man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. We're going to skip a little bit. If when you do well and suffer for it, Ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. You're going through it. You're patiently waiting, but there's grief going through. You're enduring the grief of it. See, it hurts. It troubles me. I stay up at night. I can't get through it. Yeah. Because when you know that you're going, you're going through it, you know he's there. You know that he's in this. Can't always say because things are happening good that he's in it. Right? He's just, he's just there with you. He said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Endure temptation. James chapter 1 verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Endure all things. (laughs) Oh, that just covers everything, doesn't it? Uh, We'll just, uh, instead of going through the list, we'll just say endure all things. Because there cannot be a quit in your spirit. There cannot be a stop. I'm just going to stop here and wait. I'm just going to quit. You know, the scripture says, wait upon the Lord and he'll renew your strength. Okay, that, that isn't pack it up, wait. Just stop right where you're at, wait. That means just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing and wait. That doesn't mean that you got to go digging through this and digging through that and do go and try to shake this and shake that and do this and do that and get all frantic. Anybody ever get frantic? Because God isn't answering my prayer. God is not working through this situation. 
Anybody just believe and praying and trusting? Trusting the Lord with all thy mind. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, come on, you're going to endure some hard things. You're going to endure some temptations and grief and persecution, some afflictions, even some correction. But in it all, I'm going to endure, I'm going to endure it all, Lord. Hallelujah. In the Revelation chapter 2 and 3, there's some things that, that the Lord told John to write to the churches. The churches of the first three chapters of Revelation. He said that the soldier will be given to those soldiers who faithfully endure and overcome. He that overcomes shall eat of the tree of life. He that overcomes shall not hurt, be hurt of the second death. He that overcomes shall eat the hidden manna. He shall have a new name. He shall receive power over the nations. He that overcomes, he shall be clothed in white raiment. That's purity. Hidden manna is blessing coming your way. Provision coming your way. He said, I don't know where that's going to come from. Well, you're overcoming. You can still count on it. My God shall supply all your need according to huh? say it out loud can't hear all right according to his purpose is he able is he able is he able there's hidden manna for you. Hallelujah. Now, a couple more. Shall have his name. You overcome, your name's going to be written in the book of life. If you overcome, he shall be a pillar in the temple of our God. And to he that overcome shall sit with Jesus in his throne. It requires overcoming. To have overcoming, there has to be something that has the opportunity to overcome you. And what, what's the scripture say? That when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will set up a standard against it. So the enemy's coming in like a flood, and the flood will sweep you away and take you out, right? Right? Tear down buildings and destroy the power of a flood is incredible. But God won't allow that to happen to you. So the enemy's coming against you. He wants to overcome you. You say, he, he's got all kinds of power and authority. Well, so do you. You're equipped. You're built for this. Say, I'm built for this. Just like Corey, standing up straight, ready to go. He's got his gun. He's all painted up. He's ready for that. You ready? You ready when the enemy comes in against you? What did the Bible told us? The Bible told us over and over as it comes in against you. You're, you're, it said, stand still and see the the uh, stand still and see the oh the, the power of God. I don't remember the exact words. Stand still. Okay. You just said, Pastor, you got to keep going. Hey, they didn't just stand out there and twiddle their thumbs. They were prepared and ready. They had what they needed to do the job. God had provided for them a directive. And they were in the battle, but they just let God do it. And what they do, they pray, they say, they lifted up their hands. And when the enemy wanted to overcome them, what happened? 
with the power of God, they overcame the enemy. Hallelujah. 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 Mm, I'm speaking to you today. You've got that discouragement. You need to speak to that thing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to say, I've got victory over you through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am not defeated. I am victorious. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing that we suffer or endure here as soldiers of Jesus Christ can begin to compare with the reward that we shall receive. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for, this, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In other words, what we're fighting and then no comparison to what we're getting. Amen? Hallelujah. Because God's behind it. Somebody say, God behind it. Hallelujah. For I, remic, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures because it kind of gives you an idea that Paul might have been a redneck. Well, I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. Paul also said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, and 8, I have fought a good fight. Anybody fighting? Are there any warriors in the house? Are there any standing strong? Warriors? Disciplined warriors in the house? I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. That's me. That's you. That's us. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, there may be the impossible missions. There may be mission impossible. I want you to know this is a mission possible. This is a mission possible. The fight may be fierce, but we are guaranteed the victory if we stay faithful to our commander in chief. Amen. For uh, Isaiah 41, 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Jude 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Yeah. Yeah, get personal with it. He's able to keep you from falling. Hallelujah. And to present you faultless. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Romans, Romans 8, 35 through 39 says, Who shall separate us from the love of God? See, whom he calls, he qualifies. Whom he qualifies, he enables. He's, he's prepared you. You're ready. Yeah. He's enabled you. <laughs> Makes you want to flex. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. I'm called. Amen. Anybody called? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. 
nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me read something else to you today. Sister Nika, are you coming? Praise the Lord. It is a soldier in the army of God. Anybody a soldier in the army of God? Do you feel it today? Do you feel it today? Hallelujah. Are you a disciplined, strong warrior? Are you, are you called of God today? I am a soldier in the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the word are my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army. I am listed for eternity. I will neither retire in the rapture. I will either retire in the rapture or die in this army. But I will not get out, sell out, be taken out, or pushed out. I am faithful. Faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable. And somebody say amen. amen. If my God needs me, I will be there. If he needs me to teach children, work with the youth, help adults, assist the disabled, teach Bible studies, clean the church, feed the poor, pray for the sick, or just sit and learn, he can use me because I will be there. I am a soldier. I am not a baby. I do not need to be pampered, petted. Primed up, pumped up, picked up, perked up, or pepped up. I'm a soldier. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or allure me. I'm a soldier. I'm not a wimp. I am in my place, saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. No one has to send me flowers, gifts, food, cards, candy, or give me handouts. I do not need to be coddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I am committed. I am determined. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into the, this army, I had nothing. If I end up with nothing... I will still have more than I started with. I will win. My God will supply all my needs. Amen? I am more than a conqueror. I will always be triumphant. I can do all things through Christ. Devils can't defeat me. People can't disillusion me. Weather can't weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. Governments cannot silence me. And hell can't handle me. I am a soldier. Even death cannot destroy me. For I, for when my commander calls me from this battlefield, he will promote me to a captain and bring me back to rule this world with him. I am a soldier. Can you believe that today? Do you stand to your feet and praise him? Can you fight that enemy that's trying to disillusion you, trying to discourage you, trying to bring you down. Can you stand up and say, I defeat you in Jesus' name. You have no authority over me. I am victorious through Jesus Christ. I love him. And he loves me. And he created it all. And he can move a mountain if necessary. <laughs> Nothing can stop him. Nothing can stop Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus. They're going to sing, and I invite you to come right now and bring that weariness and cast it to Jesus. And the Bible says, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. He cares for you. Bring it and just lay it down at the altar today. You say, i got sin in my life. Come, come, bring it to Jesus. Lay it down on the altar. Hallelujah. Let him bless you. Let him work in you today. the battle, greater my faith. Yes. There is no giant you cannot slay because you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000 armies. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bigger the battle, greater my faith. Hallelujah. There on, is no giant all over the room. you cannot worship. slay because you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're one of his sons. You're called. You're stronger than 10,000 
You're called. Armies. You're called. Bigger the battle, greater my faith. faith. There is no giant you cannot uh -huh. slay, cause yeah, you're yeah. stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than God is my champion, he fights for me. Oh, God is my champion, and he fights for me. Yeah. Bigger the battle, Come on now. greater my faith. Yes. There is no giant you cannot slay, because you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000 armies. My mind, God is with me in victory. Tree is mine. I'll dance in the shadow of my enemy. Cause God is my champion and he fights for me. Oh, God is my champion and he fights for me. Oh, bigger the battle, greater my faith. There is no giant you cannot slay. Cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than You're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000. Oh, yes, you're bigger the battle, greater my faith. There is no giant you cannot slay because you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000. Oh, bigger the battle, greater my faith. There is no giant. You cannot slay, cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000. Oh, bigger the battle, greater my faith. Woo! There is no giant. You cannot slay, cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000 armies. Oh. You're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger than 10,000 armies. Oh, bigger the battle, greater my faith. There is no giant you cannot slay because you're stronger than 10,000 armies. You're stronger.
would worship him. I wish somebody would give him a conference praise. I wish somebody would give him a, a hunger out of your heart praise. I wish somebody would say, I got to get through this. I got to overcome praise. Hallelujah. I wish somebody just fly that spiritual warfare right now, right here, draw the line in the sand kind of praise. Say, I am victorious. I am the victor. I am winning the battle in Jesus. I'm strong.
Sunday morning when the Lord shows up. You love it on a Wednesday night when the Lord shows up. You love it on your bedside when the Lord shows up. <laughs> He's got promises, precious promises for you. Give the smile back to the Lord. Well, give a smile back to the Lord. He's been smiling on you all day. Give a smile back to the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 God in the highest. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got something worth telling, talking about? You got something worth shouting about? You got something worth going and telling somebody, hey, don't be in despair. Let me share something with you. Hallelujah. You got a gospel. Let it compel you to get out into the street or into the convenience store or across the road or a little kid in the neighborhood. I want to tell you about Jesus. Ha <laughs> Yeah, let me tell you about Jesus. Hallelujah. And compel them to come in. Compel them to come in. If you haven't got business cards, there's in the, some in the back. They just have a little QR code. Invite them to church. Scan this, you'll find out everything you need to know. Now, they look like somebody don't know how to scan something. Share a gospel with them. Share some truth with them. Show them how to do it. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go. It's time to go, right? Time to go compel. Time to make a difference. Hallelujah. And you are here for such a time as this. For such a time as this. This is your hour. Hallelujah. This is not your grandma's hour or your grandpa's hour. This is your hour. Hallelujah. This is your hour to do your calling and, your, and the bidding of the Holy Ghost. Are you called today? Hallelujah. Have you been called out of darkness into His marvelous light? Woo! Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Lord, bless these good folks today. Be with them, guide them, keep them. Lord, we have brought petitions before you. We pray they resonate before your throne this week. Lord, you bring healing and deliverance. You'll bring back those of God that have gone astray and those that are tied up and bound up at home. We plead the blood for a move of the Holy Ghost. Lord, bring revival to Blackwell. Bring revival to our community. Let the Holy Ghost stir within us. And let us be a blessing. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with somebody. Make sure these good people.